uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for, for being here. I, I could be quite sure that there are not many Germans here because it's 12 o'clock and at 12 o'clock Germans have their lunch normally. It uh, doesn't matter where they are. <clears throat> That's uh, the agenda. I just want to shortly tell you who is GND, what does GND do, and then we move to, to the topics uh, of secure authentication protocols used in, in government documents, and that's uh, PACE and SAC, and I will explain you what is SAC and what is PACE. <clears throat> uh, what we do, what all of you do, is this three things. We pay, we communicate, and we authenticate. And I'm sure most of you, they have either all of these things or parts of these things here, money, credit cards, debit cards, corporate ID cards, SIM cards in your pocket or just somewhere else with you. Could be in your wallet or all of these things for paying, communicating, authenticating could also be in your phone. GND, just, just some seconds about GND so that you know why I could talk about that things. We have uh, three business units and government solutions is uh, the business units I'm coming from and we do everything, every kind of services for government, for government agencies. This could be government documents like passports, ID cards, there could be a chip in or no chip, also health cards, and all kinds of software around that. Personalization machines, field use, electronic gates, whatever you need. Uh, you can see the logo of Secunet. Secunet is an IT provider which is uh, quite known for security consulting. They also do security certification for electronic passports, for instance. Banknote printing, you know that Chindi is 160 years old on the 1st of June and Chindi started with banknotes and uh, security printing and uh, they are a market leader, no, a world leader in banknote processing machines. So Chindi has uh, a market share of more than 80%. So we are almost in every central bank around the world for counting, for fit checking, for destroying of banknotes. And last but not least, business unit mobile security for payment cards, credit cards, SIM cards, but also you see server software and services. This is the software running at the MNOs for managing SIM cards in the field. What, why? Now we are talking about security on the chip, mainly on passports, but also on ID cards. And what are the, the, the targets you have? Why do we have security mechanisms there? This is the authenticity and integrity we want to, to make sure. This means, uh, is this chip really issued by the government or has somebody else issued this chip and are the data still the data well is this still James uh, is this the correct name or did somebody adapt the name to fit to his name and uh, there's passive authentication which is a, an Ikeo uh, mechanism which is just a digital signature and uh, over the data and you check the signature, then you know the data have not been changed. It's mandatory for passports. Confid that's the main topic we are talking about, um, confidentiality. Um, that means, can anybody listen to the communication? And there's the protocol BAC, I will shortly talk about later, explain it again, and then say why there's a new protocol coming. Um, BAC, that's 
you know that that's just reading the machine readable zone of a passport and then you can access the data and it's optional but this every country on the world is using BAC um, there, there have been only two countries in the very beginning who, uh, which uh, didn't use it. I think it was Belgium and Thailand. But after some months, um, the whole world said, hey, you cannot do that. And then they changed to BAC as well. And originality. This, uh, is this a real chip? Or is this just the data being uh, stolen from another chip? Uh, that's, we can use active authentication against it. So. Everybody is using BAC on passports, and uh, so yeah, it's not only successful, it's the only mechanism in the field at the moment. Some words about this BAC, Basic Access Control, again. It prevents skimming and eavesdropping. And the idea behind is somebody reading the machine-readable zone of your passport, which is the, the two lines here, means that you have physical control of the passport. And then it means, OK, nobody can just read your data by passing, because then he cannot read the machine-readable zone. It's based on symmetric cryptography, which is not bad. But asymmetric cryptography is just seen as an higher and more secure way of cryptography. And the, the key used for BAC, it's generated out of this machine-readable zone here. That means uh, the key is always the same, which is generated from this machine-readable zone for the communication later. In this table here, you can see the the fields of the machinable zone and uh, okay forget about the entropy that's a, a technical um, expression but what's more interesting is the how many possibilities do I have um, to crack to listen to this communication between a terminal and a passport you can ask me why on why on earth, earth do I want to listen to the communication of a passport and a terminal. You're right, because just reading this information, you just it's like put, putting the, the passport data page on a copy machine. Then you have the same data like the, the MSZ. And certainly you can read out the biometric information when then you in, in this communication. But it's the wrong question. It's Governments, they are responsible for privacy, for data protection. And there are many think people thinking about how to, how to hack the passport. And it's about trust and reliability. So these documents just have to be secure. And if there's any article in the newspaper, again, that somebody could listen to the communication, people will think passports are not secure. So it's about trust. And if there's this a very little possibility that someone is listening to the communication, um, it's a damage for the whole industry and for the, uh, for the government. So the date of birth, I say there are 365 multiplied with 100 possibilities, why it, a year has 365 days, and we think that a traveler is not older than 100 years. The date of expiry, we think the passport is 10 years in the field, so it's 10 years validity. And uh, the document number has much more possibilities. Um, you see that uh, a billion possibilities for uh, if you have only uh, numeric numbers. So it, it seems quite secure, because you have just to find the, the correct number, because then you have the access key and you can listen to the communication. But BAC is being replaced. 
it's being replaced by PACE. When you're asking PACE, just look in the line below. That's Password Authentication Connection Establishment. Some people also say PACE. That's the, the, the French guys, and uh, I think in the German ministry they say PACE as well. So, BAC could not be improved. So, they, they changed to, an, to another algorithm. And uh, one of the, the reasons behind is also the, uh, the well-known uh, Moore's law, because every, the, the, the calculating power of PCs is uh, doubling every, I think it's every two years, huh? And, uh, but and the price is going down. So it takes you less and less time and costs to find out uh, algorithms and to find out keys of, uh, of passports like this. Now we will, I will tell you what is PACE. That's also an, uh, an access protocol like BAC. It's protects against uh, skimming and eavesdropping. It's based on uh, asymmetric uh, cryptography. Um, uh, what's, well, it's establishing a trusted channel like BAC. Uh, and the very good thing is, uh, here I'm saying it's strong random ephemeral session keys. That means you can either use this machine readable zone or you can only use a six digits pin. And the six digits pin can just be printed on the ID card or on the passport. So it does not have to be such a very long key. The security is independent from uh, the length of this pin. You may also heard about SAC, SAC. That's in the last line. And my French friends, they will never talk about PACE. They will only talk about SAC. Because PACE is somehow coming from the German ministry and the German industry. So they prefer not to talk about PACE, but about SAC. Uh, I will just come to that. About the names. So, PACE is the algorithm. SAC is the name of the technical report of the ICAO. So, that's the, about the, the names. And uh, there's PACE version 1, version 2. That's now already very technical when we are talking about mappings and the generic and integrated mapping. Let's just say it, the mapping is a, a different parameter in the algorithm. And uh, the ICAO mapping is based on, on PACE version 2. So, uh, the pins and the the cons. Con is an uh, card access number. It means you can uh, not only use the PACE protocol for access to uh, to a passport. You can also use it as an access to an ID application, for instance, and then use it as a secret pin, because this the MLZ is not secret. It's printed, and the CAN. It's just a six-digit pin which is printed too. But you can also use this mechanism for more applications. That's not only the history of PACE, but that's somehow the history of electronic passports. In 2006, the first electronic passports have been issued in Germany. I think it's been uh, in Germany, yes, so it's been the first one in, in, in Europe. And then there have been uh, so the second generation with uh, EAC in Europe. And you see in 2014, that's the important milestone, 
from December 2014, every electronic passport in Europe, within the European member states, has to have PACE. So it's not, I'm not only talking about new ideas, but PACE will be mandatory in Europe. And uh, so it will be spread to other countries as well, because PAC is, uh, I cannot say it's no longer secure, but it's just the next generation will include PACE. There's another milestone. You see the, the 1st of April 2010. This is not about electronic passports. This is that every passport issued from this milestone on has to be machine readable. So no handwritten passports can be issued after 2010. But I think there are still five countries left now still issuing handwritten passports. And they get more and more problems at, uh, at some borders. So what's the, the legal status and the status of specifications if you, if you want to check them, if you want to read them? There's an ICAO technical report defining PACE. There's an BSI, that's the, the German Agency for Security in IT. Uh, they define the PACE and the SAC protocol. The EU defined this protocol. And uh, when talking about protection profiles, that's how to certify this product. So because you want to be sure that that's a secure product, that's what the reason ID cards and passports, um, they are evaluated and certified. There's not yet any protection profile for such a document available. So, what will change or what has to change? That's for, for us as a supplier of card operating systems. The card operating system, the applications, they have to know how to handle PACE. Then uh, we have to certify this Card, oblique, card, operating, card operating systems. Personalization has to be adapted and uh, every border control station as well has to be able to read PACE. At the moment they only know BAC. <clears throat> There's no deadline yet for internationally to, that BAC will be replaced and we think it will take another decade until uh, more and more countries. I think it, at the moment um, it's, uh, it's almost 100 million electronic passports in the field and uh, it will take some time before these passports and the new passports they know uh, pace. Uh, but there's also an, uh, a transition time. That means the border control stations, they must be able to read BAC and PACE. But in case there's PACE, they have to use PACE. There's a country, it's Germany, that's the, the first country already using this protocol, and, uh, but they, they use it for the German ID card. And uh, they are using a so-called the, the card access number, that's the, the CAN I mentioned, uh, for, as the, like the machine readable zone, to access the, the data, the IKEO data on the chip. But they also use it as, an, the, as a secret pin for an uh, electronic ID application for authentication in the internet. And that's when the, the, the contract is the, the state printer in Germany and the GND is delivering 
uh, the inlays for this project. That's it already, PACE and SAC. Do you have any questions? Sorry for... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My question is, why is it taking so long to transit, go from the basic? Why does it, you said it will take 10 years to, what's the? I said in, uh, in, uh, in Europe, the milestone is now 2014, that every new passport has to do pace. But, uh, I think then it will take some years before the other countries, maybe around Europe or, I don't know, Arabic countries, Latin America, they go for pace as well. I, th I think the, the, the Europeans in this case, they are, they are leading maybe for this uh, in, in cryptography and other countries are following. It's just my expression because uh, it's been, uh, when did we introduce the first electronic passport? It's been uh, seven, eight years ago. In Europe, it was 2006. And uh, how many passports are in the field, electronic against just machine readable? It takes some time. You cannot say from now on, every country has to do. My, my question is, what's the, why is it so slow? Do you have insights? Or is there a way to speed it up? or? What, what is, is it infrastructure issue? Yes, you, 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 you have to adapt the, the, the border control infrastructure, the inspection systems. You have to, uh, to adjust the, the PKI in the, in the border control infrastructure. You have to, uh, to adapt to the, the passports. You have to evaluate and certify the passports. You have to write uh, the specifications for that. You have to write protection profiles. Uh, you have to, uh, to, make sure, uh, to make sure the interoperability. So there will be the first interoperability tests. Does Germany, can Germany read the PACE passports from the neighbor countries? There are specifications, nevertheless, one or another byte might be different. So, uh, and this takes time. And it's, we are talking about governments. Yeah, they have to decide, they need budget, and um, yeah. One, one more question. Uh, the PES and extended access control, is that the same or different? No, it's, uh, it's different. Um, uh, PES is, uh, is replacing uh, BAC, basic access control. And EAC, the Extended Access Control, um, is somehow a replacement for active authentication. So when I, the very, on this slide here, you, you can see the, uh, the EAC you can also put on the right pillar here. This also makes sure that there's no cloning of the uh, of the electronic passport. And in Europe, the EAC was mainly used uh, to make the fingerprints more secure because the, the facial image is uh, just uh, made secure by the BAC, which is not this secure because I can secretly made, make a photo of your face, but you, to get your fingers, I need criminal energy. Yeah? I have to, to think how to get a class you use or something else. So in Europe they think it's more sensitive, the fingers. And so they thought about an additional um, algorithm and this is EAC. So PACE will include EAC? Or? Uh, no, both. In, in Europe you will have PACE and EAC. Both, yeah. Okay, um, I come from Germany, of course. <laughs> But the question is, okay, you have now the um, electric passport. Just I, I'm <laughs> In this case. <laughs> Why I cannot use uh, my passport on any borders? What is the problem between in Berlin, Germany? No, my passport, my electronic passport. This, uh, this feature what we have now. We have to buy for very, very much money 
this passport, you know, from the Bundesvogelei, and but it's not helpful, you know. Only, yeah, only I, in, only in Frankfurt I can use this kind of uh, feature to pass immigration. But in Frankfurt we are very good. Um, no, that's situated. not. That's not true. I can use my German passport to go through to this. Doesn't work. Yeah, use please other one. So I, I used a lot of electronic gates already, and I, I can go to, to Lisbon, I can go into the UK, I can use my electronic passport from Germany. But you have to, first you have to go to some enrollment or how it's No, working. there's a chip in there, and there yeah, are your no, data. No, 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 this is clear. It's clear. In Bahrain, it's an e-gate. Yeah. In Abu Dhabi, it's an e-gate. Yeah. But if I go with my passport there, I cannot No, no, pass. no, because yes, you have to be registered. Ah, this is, what I in, mean with in, and the, uh, the electronic gates in, in Europe, you can only use as a, a European citizen. And here you can only use it as a citizen from Abu Dhabi. And that you have to be registered here. And in Europe, you have to be a European citizen. Or you have to be, like, I think the Swiss or Swiss nationality is possible as well. Yeah. But in, on this, we have to work. I'm traveling a lot. And this is make me really crazy. We have in Dammam in Saudi Arabia as an e-gate. Doesn't work most of the time, of course. Yeah. And, but the queue is at least one hour what you have to wait. Yep. And I don't want the, to waste the, my time on this. The reason are the legal visa requirements of every country. So they here, they just want to make sure that where do you come from? Do you need a visa? And uh, they, this is not yet possible to be that the visa information are automatically verified in the, in the passport. But I sent my passport to some embassy, okay, and then he can write in the chip. You must only yes, but this, the system here can't read it automatically yet. Then yeah, we have to work on that. You know, otherwise this <laughs> makes no sense for me. Yeah. Yes, I, I understand you. you. Yeah, 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 but that's still. That's I think nice it will still on, yeah. take some decades as well before you can travel around the world through electronic gates. But this is my target. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. I understand. Case, I don't see any sense at the moment on the e-passport. For me, definitely. For you personally, maybe not. And for I'm the governments, they, it's more secure. And uh, the. And the border gate at, at the, the official, he's more relaxed now because he can rely on some uh, electronic security devices. Before that, he had to make, it was only him verifying a passport. Now he has some help. That's for, for, for them, I think, for the, for the police, and the, they are happy with that. Okay, I pay. 65 euro for my passport that I will relax the immigration officer on in that, Abu Dhabi. That's your that's personal nice. issue, sir. <laughs> that is a result for me. Well, okay. I understand. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.